Buzz Lightyear is back again, this time for the first time. Wait, that doesn't track. This is the first time we see Buzz Lightyear again. So, no, that's not right. Uh, all right, fine. This is Disney Pixar's Lightyear, a prequel spin-off hybrid that claims to be the movie that Andy's toy is based on. There are secrets in Easter eggs, so let's find them. Well, that wasn't so hard. Lightyear follows Buzz, voiced by the cap himself, Chris Evans, as he struggles to fix a mission he blames himself for going sideways. No big deal, he just, you know, dinged the ship, holding the rest of his colony in hypersleep, only to maroon the community on this uncharted and unfriendly planet filled with giant bugs and sentient finds that want to kill them. Buzz must learn to live with his mistakes as well as reach out to others when he could use some help himself. The others in question are the Junior Patrol. Izzy Hawthorne, voiced by Kiki Palmer, is the granddaughter of Buzz's space ranger partner and dear friend Alicia Hawthorne. Unlike her grandma, Izzy is afraid of space. Mo Morrison, voiced by the multi-talented Taika Waititi, is a lost and clumsy soul trying to find his place without putting himself in harm's way. Dale Souls performs Steel, the oldest of the group with the shortest fuse, and just so happens to be out on parole. Last and most certainly least, we have Derek, a decommissioned Eric droid who gets lost both figuratively and literally, but he's not without his little secrets. Did you happen to see his front panel inscription? It reads El Riesgo Siempre Vive, which is Spanish for the risk always lives. Basically, luck favors the bold. Now that we've had our Spanish lesson for the day, what's the significance? Why don't you ask Jeanette Goldstein, who played Private Vasquez in James Cameron's supersized sci-fi sequel Aliens? That's right, Derek's inscription is an exact replica of what she put on her body armor. Am I saying that Derek is just as bold as Vasquez? Absolutely not. Still, according to one entry submitted on Derek's Pixar fandom wiki page, he is very devoted to helping others. Careful to not stop until he reaches perfection. At least one person feels that Derek was an underutilized character in Pixar's Lightyear and that he deserved more screen time. Yeah, we see you, Angus McLean, director and voice of both Eric and Derek. Speaking of voices, listen to Featheringston, the rookie voiced by comedy great Bill Hader. He is the first example of how Buzz doesn't really play well with others. At one point, he free falls after Alicia Hawthorne shoots one of the vines that attacks him. You'll be looking at her reaction shot when you hear it, but there is no doubt who it comes from or what it is. It's the Wilhelm scream from 1951's Distant Drums. Here's another cool voice-based Easter egg. Another one of Buzz's pet peeves is his autopilot device called Ivan. Ivan is a sort of buggy interactive navigation system, like OnStar. Like really like OnStar. Give a listen to Ivan's voice. That's the voice of Mary McDonald Lewis who just so happens to be the voice of OnStar. When I say Ivan is buggy, I mean it in a way that only kids of a certain generation will fully appreciate. Ivan becomes glitchy and hard to understand during Buzz's first attempt at hyperspeed. Annoyed, Buzz pulls Ivan from its contacts and gives it a blow before connecting it to the ship again. If you had a Nintendo Entertainment System in the late 80s or early 90s, this move is all too familiar to you. When a NES cart-based video game wouldn't load properly, blowing on the contacts was the way to miraculously make your game work again. Although, apparently, we were more likely to corrode the pins doing this. Hey, felt like it worked, so it worked, alright? You cinephiles out there might have noticed something else familiar about Ivan, Derek, and of course Eric for that matter. These droid beings shared a common characteristic with a classic computer villain. That camera lens with the light in the middle is a reminder that sentient AI might not be such a great idea. You might end up with a murderous program like HAL 9000 from Stanley Kubrick's Space Masterpiece 2001 A Space Odyssey. I'm telling you, computers aren't toys. Well, at least one is. You're gonna need your ears for this one, too. When Buzz is going over the plan for how to destroy the Zerg robots and head home, his emotional companion droid Cat Socks is sitting on a control panel that makes four distinct tones. These tones are a little nod to a 70s and 80s electronic memory game called Simon, which used different color and note-based sequences for hours of fun. Well, more like minutes of frustration. Simon isn't the only bit of 80s tech to get a wink. Check out Buzz when he tries to get a few winks of his own. He claps his hands to turn off the lights. Believe it or not, this is your grandma's technology. In 1984, the clapper arrived on the scene, allowing people to stay seated and just clap in order to turn devices on and off in their homes. It's basically a sound-activated switch that reacts to noise, so as you can imagine, it reacts to other loud sound as well. Not for music lovers or the arthritic. Ouch. Painful. One painful aspect of Buzz's mission is watching his partner Alicia, voiced by Uzo Aduba, live out her entire life in what for him is the span of several days. 
This is because of the time dilation that occurs every time Buzz attempts hyperspeed in an effort to get his colony back home. For every minute he spends up in space trying to reach hyperspeed, years go by on the uncharted planet below. Hmm, an astronaut sacrifices himself and his relationships for the greater good of humanity. Sound familiar? Maybe a little like Christopher Nolan's space-based opus Interstellar, in which Matthew McConaughey misses decades of his kids' lives in the span of minutes, trying to find an inhabitable planet for Earthlings. Wow, bummer, huh? Let's lighten things up a little with some Easter eggs connected to Pixar and Toy Story. Part of the fun of Buzz doing his mission log is watching Alicia give him no end of grief. She even serves up a hilarious soundtrack while he explains the importance of wearing the Space Ranger suit to the rookie. As she's laughing, he says, you're mocking me, aren't you? Where have we heard that before? Well, the first Toy Story, of course. During the scene when Woody comes to realize Toy Buzz thinks he's a real Space Ranger. Speaking of Woody, remember when he first sees Buzz Lightyear standing on Andy's bed in Toy Story? And how that same shot is repeated in Toy Story 2 when Buzz encounters the display Buzz at Alice Toy Barn? Get ready because here it is again, only it socks looking up at Buzz after he puts on his Space Ranger suit. Oh, quick, go back, pause! Look behind socks, and what do you see? A bunch of canisters, but not just any canisters, the yellow ones used on the scare floor in Monsters, Inc. There's another Toy Story 2 Easter egg to be found in the first fight between Buzz and Zerg. Check out the flip and shoot maneuver. It's the same maneuver used by Toy Barn Buzz on the elevator as well as video game Buzz controlled by Rex, though with varying results. Also in Toy Story 2, we learn during the elevator fight that Zerg is Buzz's dad a la Empire Strikes Back. Lightyear tinkers with this concept. When Zerg opens up to reveal his true identity inside the suit, Buzz says, Dad? As it turns out, he's looking at an older version of himself. Did you know that for the older Buzz, Chris Evans went through a temporary surgical procedure to age his voice 40 years? Yeah. No, just kidding, that didn't happen. Older Buzz was voiced by Hollywood legend James Brolin. Did you know that before being cast in the movie, James Brolin had not seen any of the Toy Story movies? Seriously, I'm not messing with you. He knew nothing about the story or the characters and took the job based on the fact that, according to him, the Pixar guys have good judgment. Can't argue with that. He sure has a young Buzz on the run. In the final showdown between the two, Buzz hides from his older self in the floor vents. This is another Aliens-based Easter egg for y'all. The Buzzes are playing out an homage to the scene where young Newt, played by young Carrie Henn, hides from the Queen Alien before Sigourney Weaver brings the pain in the climax of that film. More classic sci-fi movie references abound. How about the arresting sequence when Buzz is spinning out in space while trying to install the crystal drive and gain control of his ship? It feels like the opening sequence of Alfonso Cuarón's space thriller Gravity. Or as I like to call it, Sandra in the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Want another fun movie reference? Listen when the Zap Patrol comes to retrieve Buzz and his junior patrol. They bark, zap, 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 just like the police officers bark, hut, 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 in John Landis's bluesy comedy classic, The Blues Brothers. Buzz and his team have some explaining to do with Commander Burnside, voiced by Isaiah Whitlock Jr. Burnside was the one who told Buzz that the Space Ranger program was going away, which caused Buzz to disobey his orders, steal a ship and socks, and then jump into space. Instead of throwing the team in jail, Commander Burnside reinitiates the Space Ranger program as the Universe Protection Division. Basically, he's rewarding Buzz and his team. The same thing happened to another crew who ignored direct orders from their superiors in order to save the life of a dear friend. In Star Trek IV The Voyage Home, James T. Kirk and his peers stand before the Federation to face the consequences for their crimes. Kirk is demoted from admiral to captain, which basically puts him and his crew right where they wanted to be in the first place, back aboard the Starship Enterprise. Just like the crew of the Enterprise, Buzz and his team board their new ship in order to go out and defend the universe. Get a load of Buzz's ship! It's modeled after the ship box Buzz comes in in the Toy Story movies. Talk about coming full circle! And that's not the last Toy Story reference. What's a movie anymore without a post credit scene or two? In this scene, we join Commander Burnside in his corner office with a view, where we get to witness the benefits of his colony's laser shield firsthand. We also get to see a few tchotchkes sitting on shelves to the left. On the second shelf, there's a statue of an LGM, that's a little green man, from the claw cage at Pizza Planet in Toy Story. He's not alone, there's another space character reference to be found on the right side of the shelf above. It's a Bernie from Pixar's WALL-E. We've only scratched the surface of Lightyear's secrets and Easter eggs. Up for some more? Go check out Did You Catch These 30 Lightyear Facts right now! 
I hope you liked this video and found some cool new details you haven't seen before in Disney Pixar's Lightyear. Make sure you subscribe to Movie Logic for more daily movie facts, trivia, and Easter eggs.